so chayim kanawi masaika tuach ilchchu naika nim naika atabaskin yubik pikovil na tuwen chilamis kapashawash ilai so hello everyone my name is Crystal Star Stepanski I am Atabaskin Yubik and Kovil and I work for the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde a long time ago when I was in high school I remember sitting in my history class learning about different tribes that were involved in the major Indian wars and those are in places far away and that led me to ask questions about who are the indigenous people here in this land what languages did they speak later i also asked my mom how come we didn't speak fluent yupik i knew a handful of words we used in the home but i realized i was the product of the government's goal to kill the indian and save the man So in 2000, I received the biggest blessing of my life. I gave birth to my daughter Raven. I made sure to feed her cultural identity so she didn't feel the same starvation that I did. I felt something missing. And it was a need for cultural knowledge. And but the brutal fact was I was starving and I wanted to reverse that malnourishment in my heart and soul so that set me on a path to learn as much as I could about the different tribes in North America in 2002 the confederated tribes of Grand Ronde launched their Chinook Wawa preschool immersion program Chinook Wawa is the official language of the tribe it's a native trade language and this language is spoken as far south as the california oregon border the state of oregon washington and is through british columbia and as far north as southeast alaska after they launched their program i was recruited as a parent and i immediately enrolled my daughter I resonated with her values. I resonated with their values. <laughs> because at the core was the language. And on top of that, they used place-based and cultural knowledge. And they referred to teachers in familial terms, like uncle, auntie, and grandma. And they treated each child as if they were their own niece, nephew, or grandchild. I was personally invested in this program because I saw how my daughter was thriving. So in 2004, I applied for an open position and became a language apprentice. So in school growing up, I struggled. About the only things I really excelled in was in the arts. So becoming a teacher was the last thing I thought I would be when I grew up. But I became more than that. I am Quas Crystal, Anti Crystal. And I had so many wonderful new nieces and nephews part of my growing family. So pronunciation is important to me because in Chinook Wawa, there are sounds that we don't hear in English. Sounds such as and my favorite. <laughs> so again, Going back to that feeling of starvation, here in front of me was this grand feast. My mouth was watering, and I just wanted to devour it all. But I didn't know where to start or how. So 
I just took it one step at a time. I learned to have patience with myself while being inspired, motivated by our children, expressing themselves while they played or their worldview. So I remember this moment out on the Hihi Ilai playground. My daughter came running up and she stopped abruptly and she looked up into the sky and she said to no one in particular, Snas Chagu. Well, as quickly as she stopped, she continued on her way across the Hihi Ilai. I had no idea what my daughter just said. Later, I would realize and connect it. Oh, she said, rain is coming. I really cherish my aha moments in the language. Being a native language teacher, we have opportunities to go attend comp to <laughs> We have opportunities to attend conferences, such as SILS, Stabilizing Indigenous Languages Symposium. This is where I learned about sleeping languages. A sleeping language is a language which currently has no fluent speakers. Chinook Wawa, here in our area, we had a handful of speakers at the time. It was in a critical state. My boss would jokingly say, but there was a very serious undertone, we all can't ride in the same vehicle in case something happens. <laughs> so this really changed my perspective. It wasn't so much about feeding or satisfying my own hunger. It was about feeding the community. And I wanted to help heal Chinook Wawa. What do we do when a loved one is ill or they're hurt? What is it as a parent we instinctively know how to do for our children? We nurture them. We love them. We help heal them. It was now my personal goal to help heal this language because this language is a part of me and it's helped nourish my heart and soul. This language is a part of this community. This language is a part of this land. So let me fast forward you to 2013. My coworker approached me about illustrating a children's book. Well, up until that point, we had taken English books, children's books, and we had translated them into Chinook Wawa. Oftentimes, the subjects were unrelatable, like dragons or princesses or other European concepts. This, my coworker, tailored this book to our community. This would be our first book published, our first children's book published in our language. I would now like to read to you Good Night, Grand Ron. Slush Polikli, Shawash Ilai, Good Night, Grand Ron. Slush Polikli, Shawash Tilacham, Good Night, Grand Ron people. Slush Polikli, you skit house. Good night, plank house. Slush Polikli, Conoe stick. Good night, forest. Slush Polikli, Olopus. Good night, coyote. Slush Polikli, Tomanawis Lamatai. Good night, spirit mountain. Sluj Polikli, Lo Lo Ish Ish. Good night, round dance. Sluj Polikli, Pow Wow. Good night, Pow Wow. 
Sushpolikli Kalakwati stick. Good night, cedar tree. Sushpolikli O Chayu Pistankia. Good night, Grand Ron Canoes. Sushpolikli Agency E Moth. Good night, Agency Creek. So, now that you heard some Chinook Wawa, I would like to teach you some. It's time for an interactive language lesson. The word you heard repeated throughout the book, slush, means good. Now, how do we make the barred L sound? It's easy. It's all in how, where you place your tongue, and where do you place your tongue? The same place when you say the word love. Say love, love. love. <laughs> so your tongue is sitting behind your two front teeth. Keep your tongue there and push air out the sides. Let's try it together. You're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys are awesome. Amazing. You're waking up the language here. Okay. Now I'll say the other part of the word, and you repeat after me. Oosh, 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 oosh. I think you're advanced. We're ready to combine it. Okay, together, let's say, sloosh, sloosh. Awesome. Now when somebody asks you, how are you? You have a response, sloosh. So the second word I want to teach you is mossy. Thank you. Now, the roots of this word is in French. This is from the days when the French fur trappers were living in the Pacific Northwest. In French, merci, <laughs> the R's are difficult for indigenous people to pronounce. <laughs> So they often got dropped out of words. So now we have the word mossy. You try. Mossy. Oh, again, mossy. Oh, sloosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So this is my personal invitation to each one of you to come and explore our culture and our language. Now, the first place to start for this area is the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde's website, grandron.org. There you can learn about the history, culture, current events, or participate in some classes. Or maybe you want to plan out a trip to the museum, to Chalu. And are you interested in learning more about Chinook Wawa? Yes, we have an app for that. <laughs> the app's name is Chinook Wawa. C H I N U K W A W A, Chinook Wawa. And it is absolutely free. It's supported on all devices. But if you're more like me and you want more of a human interaction, we offer free language classes in Grand Ronde in the fall, winter, and spring. So I want to welcome you into our world where we can learn and share together. We have more in common than what separates us. So I invite each one of you to come join me at this feast, this potlatch of rich cultural knowledge I want to help nourish your soul. So I will leave you with a quote that I carry in my heart every day. When we hear our children speak in our native languages, we hear the voices of our ancestors. Hayumasi, many thanks.